Bonjour à toutes et à tous, j'espère que vous avez eu un, une bonne semaine. Ben, Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire aujourd'hui Aujourd'hui, nous allons apprendre le subjonctif. Alors, bienvenue au subjonctif. Et maintenant, quoi faire La question c'est, qu'est-ce que c'est le subjonctif Et comment est-ce qu'on l'utilise Et comment est-ce qu'on le conjugue um, Et... Que c'est l'importance du subjonctif. Alors, on va parler de tout ça. Ok, so what did you say? I said welcome to <laughs> subjunctive, right? Um, and now what? Right? So, um, what are we going to be doing with it? How was it used? Um, how was it created? Um, what's the reason for it? Um, we're going to go into all of that and then I'm, we're going to go straight into what your homework is. Okay, so let's get to it. So the subjunctive is, is what we call a mood, right? Um, and I want you to think about it as a mood of questioning, a mood where someone is suggesting things like advice. Um, it's more like things that you have to think about, right? So um, like I said before, Um, and it's used, you know, with an emotion. So just, you know, thinking about like hope, things that you hope for, things that you desire, things that you want. Um, in Spanish, um, before you use a subjunctive, you use the term ojalá, right? Um, and you also use the expression que, Q-U-E, right? With the accent. But in French, we just use que, right? So for those of you that speak Spanish, if you're making that transition from Spanish to French, or you're looking for some type of similarity, Right? We use que. We don't have an expression that we use such as ojalá, but um, you do have que to let you know that you need to be looking out for the subjunctive. Okay? So how do we even create it? And that's the important thing. Um, you know me. I'm all about math. I'm always doing that plus, minus, you know, asking you guys to create formulas to come up with stuff. Um, so here, what I want you to think about is I want you to think about The il and l present tense of regular verbs. We're not going to touch the irregular verbs right now. Um, that's a hot mess, and that's going to take some time, right? But right now, we're going to use the um, regular form of the il and l in the present tense of verbs. So whether it's ir verbs, er verbs, or re verbs, que ce soit eux, les verbes qui terminent en er, ir ou re, on utilise la troisième personne plurielle. C'est-à-dire, il et elle avec le S. Okay? And then, um, after that, what we do is we add what's called out of place. Why am I saying that? Because it's, it's irregular. Um, it doesn't follow. It's not fluid. Right? There are exceptions to the rule, as I tell you before. As I've told you before, French always has exceptions to the rule. And that's what we're going to be reviewing. So, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. So I took the verb penser, right? And what I did was I took the third person, plural, la troisième personne, pluriel, right? And I conjugated it. So it's P-E-S, P-E-N-S-E-N-T, right? Now I have to remove the ending, the E-N-T, and I have to add an E. So it looks like pense, je pense. Now... Um, what we're going to do is, okay, so how do we create the subjunctive? Okay, so what you can see here is I took um, je and I used the plural form of pense. Okay, all right, so how did I create the um subjunctive, using the verb pense. So as you can see here, I, I have my pronoun, and then I took the third person, plural, right? The troisième person pluriel, c'est-à-dire il, I took the il and l form of pense, which ends in ENT. Then I subtracted the ENT, right? As you can see here, and then I added the E, right? So that's what we see here, and it becomes pense, je pense. And then I did the same thing here for two, except for you're not seeing me um, remove the add the ENT to take out the ENT. I just went simplified it and added ES. So that becomes a two pense, right? 
And then for E and L and O, I did the same thing. Um, I simplified it again where I just took the P, E, and S and I added the E and it becomes a pulse. You're like, wait a minute. Pulse, pulse, and pulse. This looks so familiar. This is like present tense, Madame Louis. Yeah, I know, because that's basically what it is. Well, why didn't you just say that? Because I couldn't just tell you that because you had to first of all know that you have to use the eel and l form of the present tense of the regular verb to even start. Yeah, now you know. <laughs> okay, so, and now you see why this is out of place because normally when we're talking about irregular ver verbs, um, I mean, regular verbs, and we're talking about, you know, changes that are occurring, we're using the new form of the verb like we do with the parfait, right, to form it. Um, and the vous form, right, we use that, and that's how we're able to, you know, have our base. But now our base is il and l, so there's a switch. Okay, so this is where the out of place comes in, because now with nu and vous, Right? We have the ENT. We take out the ENT, but now we add the irregular form. C'est-à-dire l'imparfait. L'imparfait de nous, alors ça, ça devient nous pensions. Okay? And then we do the same thing with vous. Right? So now it's in its simple, simplified form. I'm not using the ENT, you know, plus and subtract, right, where it cancels out. I'm using and I'm adding the irregular form. So now you have pensier. Right? And then what happens here with il and l? Pense, right? Plus the ENT, minus the ENT, plus the ENT. That's why you just see that, right? Because it would have just, it would have been insane for me to write plus ENT, minus ENT, plus ENT. Um, so there you have the simplified version of that. So what are we looking at now? So basically, when you are creating the subjunctive um, tense, with um, the present tense verbs. Notice that you have the je, the tu, the il, and the elle, and the il and the elle au pluriel, and they are all in present tense form. They just look like regular present tense verbs. The only thing that you have to remember, right, um, the important thing is that your nu and vu won't take that, right? So you have to go all the way back and think about um, the imparfait. All right, so what does that mean for us? So remember, as I've always told you, and I've always taught you, that the language is based off of precept. Precept. So this is what you learned in French 1, right? This is what you learned in French 2, right? So you see a combination of French 1 and French 2 coming in, and they're being morphed together, together excuse me, to create... Um, an expression of hope, an expression of a hypothetical situation or advice, right? So if I were to give you a sentence, for example, je pense que, I think that, je pense que um, tu dois faire tes devoirs, right? I'm giving you advice. I think that um, you need to do your work, right? Um, if I want to say, we hope, we hope that we'll be able to um, go outside soon. Nous espérions, nous espérions, espérer is the verb, nous espérions que um, nous allons dehors demain, right? Um, and so that's how we create that. And so what are we going to do now? So now what we're going to do is... I'm going to, we're going to try a couple of examples coming straight from the book. And this will be your homework for Tuesday and Thursday. So all of your work is going to be coming out of VHL this week, right? Um, and we're going to spend a little time on this because the subjunctive is always a little tricky. But um, so this week and next week, we're going to focus on it. And we're going to also, I'm going to also going to introduce to you the irregular form of the verbs um, for the subjunctive, you know, our regular verbs, être, avoir, aller, um, and faire, because this is always important. Those are the four cluster verbs that you learn in French 1, and I want you to, you know, transition that in the subjunctive for French 2. All right, so let's get started. I'll be right back with those examples. Okay, à bientôt. <laughs> Thank you.
Ok, nous sommes ici, euh, comme je vous avais promis, ce que j'ai fait, j'ai euh, laissé les terminaisons des, des verbes ici et j'ai formulé euh, comment, comment euh, formuler euh, les phrases pour conjuguer les verbes. Ok, so what we can see is that you need the could, you need the pronoun, and you need the verb, and then you know to finish out the sentence. And so um, what I did was um, I put in here some things that maybe you might recognize and how to also not um, place errors when you're conjugating the verbs. So here it says il faut que, meaning that it is necessary that you, right? It is necessary that you put on your mask before entering the store, right? That's something that we're going through right now with COVID, right? COVID-19, so, il faut que tu mettes ton masque avant, avant d'entrer euh, dans le magasin. Um, ok, so, avant d'entrer, avant d'entrer, avant d'entrer, avant d'entrer dans le magasin, c'est correct. Ok, so what do we see here? So here, what I've done is I have put an X next to the present tense of the regular verb of what it normally looks like, right? So if you were to put that there, um, you know, VHL would mark it incorrect. Um, any type of website that you go to when you're practicing the subjunctive, that also would mark it incorrect because this is the present tense of the regular form of the verb and it's not coming from the eel, l third person plural, right? So what you need to do is you need to take the third person Right, which is met, m e t t e n t, which is m e t t e n t. Right, so you remove the e n t and then you add the correct ending for the tu, and that's how you get met. Right, so it's you know if you in your mind if you revert back to French one, it's very you know it's it's pretty easy to go back and be like yeah, that looks right, yeah, because you're thinking about the present tense form, you're not thinking about the subjunctive form, right. So you always have to think about that third, plur third person plural when making this contribution. Um, second verb, second sentence. Um, il est essentiel que nous restions chez nous. Right? It is essential. Right? It is essential that. Right? And you see the que popping up again. Right? Nous restions. And now you can see how this one is in the imperfect form, right? La parfait. Um, it is essential that we stay at home. Chez nous, at home, right? So it's essential that we stay at home. And then for the third one, il est possible, it is possible. It's possible that, right? And here you see that I did this one on purpose because I wanted you all to remember that with the third person singular, Right, um, E on L, you have to drop that E. So you're not going to say que L, you're going to drop that E, you're going to put that apostrophe there. Right, so you have, il est possible qu'elle, right? It is possible that she finishes her homework. It's possible that she finishes her homework, right? Well, don't you think it should be, it would be possible that she would finish her homework? No, that's the conditional, right? It, would it be, um, is it possible that she will finish her homework? That's the future. Right? So we're talking about the subjunctive. So we're saying it's possible that she finishes her work, her homework. So what I did too here, I did the same thing here. So normally, with the regular form of finir, with the third person, it's fini, F-I-N-I-T. But when you use the subjunctive, it's finis. So, F-I-N-I-S-S-E. -S -S -E. Why? Because um, the third person plural for um, finir is finis, F-I-N-I-S-S-E-N-T. -S -S -E so, that's removing the E-N-T, right, and just adding that E at the end. And that is how you create the subjunctive, ladies and gentlemen. So, what are we going to do? Qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu va faire? Qu'est-ce qu'on va, qu qu va faire pour uh, mardi? Pour mardi, vous allez travailler en VHL, vous allez compléter les exercices. Et bien, jeudi, vous allez faire la même chose. On va pratiquer, 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 pratiquer. Parce que c'est quelque chose que, 
qu'on doit prendre notre temps là-dessus. So the subjunctive is something that we are going to, um, we, that we're going to need to take time with. So like I said before, we're going to spend two weeks with the subjunctive. So this week and next week, right? Just in the present tense. Um, so what you're going to see is um, regular ER verbs, IR verbs, RE verbs this week, right? You're going to see, um, you know, irregular verbs pop up next week on um, Tuesday and then possibly Thursday. Um, it's either going to be a quizzes type thing just to see how you understand the subjunctive or it's going to be something where you all are creating your sentences on your own to complete that. I haven't made that decision yet as to what we're going to do for that Thursday, but I'm um, just giving you a heads up of what to expect. Okay? So, um, j'espère que vous avez bien compris comment créer le subjonctif. Ah ben, on va faire un petit revue encore une fois. C'est que vous avez besoin de le mot que que c'est essentiel, ok? Que c'est essentiel, que, 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 et puis, and then, vous avez besoin du, du pronom et puis le verbe dans le troisième personne, ok? Um, pluriel, vous allez enlever le ENT et puis vous allez ajouter les propres terminaisons des verbes. Ok? Alors, au revoir. Je te verrai la semaine prochaine. Bien à vous. Au revoir.